the last time I had my car all together, uh, I wasn't happy with the amount of clutch travel. You had to push the clutch a long way down. In fact, it was almost to the floor um, before it would fully disengage. Um, that's the clutch pedal, obviously. And I'm pretty certain that the reason is that where I've taken the clutch cover off of the flywheel, um, it's caused the self-adjust uh, thing to activate and it's moved the um, the clamping plate down further in the you know against the against the driven plate so I looked online how do you reset them and the, obviously you can buy tools and I have actually ordered a tool and I'm now beginning to think I may have wasted my time um, I've always also seen people who basically drill holes in their bench or in a suitable piece of flat wood bolt the uh, clutch cover down onto the bench and I'll show you basically how in a second and then put another big hole through the um, through the bench in the center of the clutch and and use a threaded bar to press the um, you know the activation little fingers downwards so that it pulls the um, pulls the clutch plate back up and then you put pressure against these tabs here um, these tabs here which rotates the disc inside which means that it goes it resets the self adjustment so that's doing it with lots of holes in your bench or a suitable piece of wood what i was interested to know is is it possible to do it with a hydraulic press um, because i've got a press and um, you know i thought i'd try that now this actually is a spare clutch cover. This was the one that I took out of the car originally. My, um, my, my racing one is up here towards the back, although actually they're exactly the same. They're actually made by the same company, LUK. And uh, in fact, this is a completely surface serviceable clutch. Um, I don't know why I bothered changing it, quite honestly. Even the driven plate has got loads of uh, um, material left in it to, uh, to use. Anyway, so to do all of this, you have to make sure that whatever you're clamping down against, the, the pressure plate, the clamping plate, has to be above the surface. You can't clamp down and push on the pressure plate. So in my case, what I'm doing is I'm using um, a bolt like this. These I just happen to have these... Um, so this is a good size. So this is um, an M8 bolt with a 13 mil head. So it's M8. And then I've put a washer on it. And then I'm using a nut as a spacer, a big nut. I'm afraid I don't know what size that is. It looks as though it's probably M12 actually. But anyway, a suitable size uh, spacer. Some people use um, socket um, wrenches actually is the spacer because you have to do this even if you're going to use the drill down through the bench type approach anyway I'm doing that then I'm putting it through and then I've got I happen to have some M8 um, nuts with washers on them but you could just use a standard nut um, with uh, you know and, and use another washer so get that down onto there and then we just lock that in place Okay, so now it's it's sort of ready to go. You can see that I've done four out of six. Now the reason I've done four out of six is because that's all I can fit actually into the uh, into here. Um, so if I put that in like that, uh, oh, it's a bit wobbly. Where's that? That's interesting. I'm not sure why that's so wobbly. No, that's wobbly. Okay, so there's some distortion already in my clutch cover, which is interesting. Huh. Yeah, I haven't done anything with it yet, so it's not nothing I've done. This is how I took it off. I guess once you clamp them down, they um, just pull into shape. Obviously, you can imagine these are just pressed and who knows how it was installed in the past. Somebody might have, you know, tightened it up just across. I, I do it gradually. I do 
do it in pairs and gradually tighten it down, but somebody may have just uh, wanged it down in one position and then done the others. I don't think that will stop us, but um, let's carry on anyway. So, so we need to get it centralised and then I need something to press down on the fingers. Now I've seen people use old thrust bearings. I think I have an old thrust bearing, but um, let me go and have a look and uh, I'll be back with you. If, if not, I'll figure out something else. So it turns out I do still have the, uh, the original thrust bearing um, still on the fork, as you can see. Uh, I think I can, I think I can get this off of here. Yeah, I think this will, yeah, I think this will come apart pretty easily. I'm trying to uh, light it so you can see. Uh, so just a screwdriver, because this is plastic. So if we put a bit of pressure like that. Hey. Okay, so that's the first thing done. Um, so that'll, uh, that should do the job. So let's move back onto the press. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna re rely on this bar of my press instead of using the center thing, which will go straight through. I'm gonna use the uh, horizontal bar to press down on the um, thrust bearing, release bearing, call it what you like. Do it very slowly. Why is that not pumping any further? Stupid thing. That's not full range, I know. Anyway, it is working, so let's re-adjust this thing and um, we'll have another go. Right, I've had to add a bit more packing, a um, couple of bits of wood there. Um, to bring this up higher I'm sure my um, I'm sure this thing should go higher but I don't know what's wrong with it um, sorry what I meant was I'm sure this should have a longer range you know when it compresses this uh, press but uh, there's obviously something wrong um, okay let's try again see if we can release it That's not central. So this is this is something you're going to have to watch for. You've got to get it pretty central. Um, is it? Uh, need the thrust bearing central on the fingers, otherwise it won't um, push them all down evenly, which is obviously what we want. So that's central there. Okay, go again. Right, I think that's about full range because the fingers are now down level with the, there's some uh, bits that go between a central ring in the cover plate and come up here onto the outer piece. And the fingers are about level with that. So I think that's as far as it should go. Now the adjuster at the moment actually is adjusted to maximum. So obviously without anything pressing against the, uh, the plate here, that seems to uh, cause it to adjust to maximum. So I'm assuming what happens is, as I push that round and lock it into position, and then I slowly release this off, it's gonna pull the plate upwards. So let's see if that's what happens. Uh, let's need a suitable screwdriver, and I have to do this carefully. Hmm, well that's not as easy as I expected. So that's not moving at all. Let's see if we can just make sure that's right, that's all the way down now the uh, that's touching. Try not to stab myself. I'm glad I tried this with my spare one. Uh, this isn't 
this isn't working the way I expected it. Hmm. Why is that then? Okay, I think I'm going to have to go and research how this should work. The one I saw, all that happened was they pressed the plate down like that and then they pushed against the this thing here and the, um, the adjuster plate rotated. Um, but that's not happening in this case. Okay, I found the answer through experimentation actually. The answer is don't push it all the way down to be level with these uh, fixed pieces and you might have to just fiddle around with that if you put it all the way down this thing this adjuster thing is jammed and you can't do anything about it but i've let it up about five mil from where it was and now i can i can fully adjust it so i push that all the way round like that and that's locked it into position and now I should be able to very slowly release the pressure. Yeah, and that's that's done it. So uh, let's see if I can. This is the stupid thing about this press, which really annoys me. Um, okay, so if I carefully take this out, what you can see is that the adjusters now are fully over that way and the plate is further retracted into the body of the, uh, the outer surface and these fingers are fully out so um, it should release faster. It will still adjust, it will still self adjust um, but um, that's what I was trying to achieve to get this to come round to this position here so that it's fully locked and um, ready to go back on. So that's my spare clutch plate. So now all I've got to do, let's see if we can compare these side by side actually. So this is my the one out of my car. You can see how it's already adjusted partially um, and you can see this one. Actually there's not that much difference but you can see there um, if you look at the gap just there, the gap between this thing here and, and just there, you can see there's a, there's a bit of a gap. But if you look at the one I've just reset, you can see there's, there's virtually no gap. So um, it seems as though that's a viable way to do this. Uh, I don't think it would cause any form of distortion um, of the clutch cover. You, as we already saw, my clutch cover was already partially distorted. So um, I think, bearing in mind it's made out of pressed steel, um, once we uh, bolt it back onto the car, um, I think it will be fine. It will just pull it into shape if it, if it causes any form of distortion, but I can't believe it will. Okay, I hope you found that useful. So that's just an, a further way. If you haven't got a press, please do check uh, on YouTube for videos showing um, people doing it just with drilling holes through pieces of wood and um, into the bench uh, or into their bench, because you certainly can do it that way as well. This is a bit of a... Um what do you call it, epilogue if you like, to the original video. So this is the uh, pressure plate I've taken out of the car. I've just tried to reset it and what's happened is the spring here originally just suddenly twisted and what got jammed underneath here. I've tried to pull it back into position. It keeps, it just will not stay in position now whenever I try and do it. So this is a problem you could have no matter whether you're using a press or you're doing it with the other method or even if you're doing it with an actual proper tool. You need to be really careful with these springs and keep an eye on them as you uh, compress, you know, as you try and push the thing around. You can see I can still push it. That bit still works, but it's all jammed up and every time I move it back here it just flips and goes 
some other way, you know. Anyway, I've got to the stage where I've just spent about 45 minutes trying to get it to stay in position and I've given up. So what I'm going to do is install the other cover plate because the other cover plate that I took out of the car actually is perfectly okay. It's got no scoring. It's just got heat marks. There's nothing wrong with it. So I'm going to go with that. But, um, you know, I always try and present warts and all in these videos, all the mistakes I made. This is definitely something you need to be aware of.